All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Anthony Monte, the Associate Director of the Nanovic Institute for European Studies. This is our fall film series, Young and Broke in Europe. Uh, timely topic. Last month, we showed a, a film by Ken Loach from the UK um, called The Angels Share. Uh, this month, we have a film from Russia. Maybe. You'll hear more about that in a second. The person who will s say a few words about the film is Professor Simeon Leandris, our professor of history at Notre Dame. He uh, works in modern European history and is the co-director of the Russian and East European uh, Studies program here as well. Um, he is also the campus's closest analog to Indiana Jones, <laughs> meaning that he will go to far-flung places in the Caucasus Mountains to find rare archival resources that he'll bring back, negotiate and bring back to Notre Dame at great personal danger and expense. Um, but Notre Dame now has some extraordinary collections in Russian and East European studies uh, of original materials that continue to grow, uh, largely due to his efforts and the efforts of uh, his close colleagues. So Semyon will say a few words about uh, tonight's film, and then you can enjoy the presentation. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you and good evening. Uh, I didn't go very far to get the film, that particular film. Anthony just sent it to me. And uh, I still, I'm still having doubts why I'm here, because I didn't realize the film is Russian. Uh, it seems that fi that film could have been taken, the story of the film could have been taken anywhere. In fact, um, uh, the idea for the film, uh, as I've read in one of the interviews with the director of the film, Andrei Zvegintsev, who is a widely acclaimed and award-winning director in Russia today, uh, a, a British screenwriter uh, uh, turned to him and several others with the idea of sh doing a film on apocalypses in uh, Europe, Asia, uh, South America and North America. And uh, then he uh, began raising money, but uh, that didn't happen. He wasn't able to raise money. At the same time, the film director, Zvagintsev, was able to write uh, a screenplay within a month uh, simply because he had a story ready. So something like that must have happened. Um, I think the... Uh, about two uh, themes that I would uh, want to touch upon very briefly, which should help you contextualize uh, uh, two aspects of contemporary Russian life, or at least post-Soviet realities in Russia. One is the theme of that series, that is the uh, young and broke, or rich and poor, and another one is the compulsory military service in contemporary Russia the horrifying experience of that, uh, specifically. So the uh, rich and the poor. Uh, just yesterday I read uh, uh, on a website, uh, I think Financial Times, if I remember correctly, that 35% of public wealth in Russia is held by 110 people. Uh, the world ratio is 1% to 2%. So that shows you uh, an outrageous inequality, I mean, really an un unimaginable inequality. The main hero of that film, uh, of today's movie, is Vladimir, who is probably uh, in the lower 500s or within the thousand of uh, wealthiest people in Russia, clearly not in the first 110. Um, it's unknown where he made his money, but it is clear that he... Uh, uh, lives a very uh, luxurious lifestyle. He and his wife, Elena, the main heroine, they have a luxurious apartment in the middle of, in the center of Moscow, someplace. Uh, they get up in the morning, they eat healthy food, the food has been delivered to them from an organic food store. Uh, then he goes uh, to a fitness club. Uh, there he exercises, he comes home after work or someplace, and they watch television. And she watches some kind of show, talking show, and he watches sports. So there's very little interaction there. But basically, they live a very non-Russian uh, lifestyle uh, when it comes to the majority of the population, at least. Uh, at the same time, Yelena's uh, son from a previous marriage lives on the outskirts of Moscow someplace in the rundown working-class districts 
where many people are unemployed and certainly don't make mu mu much money. So she travels there from world wo one world of, of luxurious life of the so-called new Russians in the center of Moscow. He, she takes a commuter train and she goes to the outskirts to visit her son and his family and he has two children, they expect a third one. She goes there and uh, in uh, tries to help uh, with raising the child, but also goes to do shopping in a local grocery store, and they don't even know what credit card is. They don't take credit cards there. So these are two different worlds there. Now, uh, she goes there, uh, she puts some money aside from her stipend, her allowance that her husband gives her monthly to try to help uh, her son, and especially her grandson. Here we come to the second reality, and that is the compulsory military service in Russia today, which is a horrifying experience, and everybody tries to avoid it. Uh, I think the service is for two years, and boys especially, boys who have to serve, males, not females, uh, do whatever it takes to avoid the service, and usually they try to buy their way out. For that, they need money to bribe local military district officials. And that's exactly the task of Elena, the main heroine. She's trying to convince her husband <coughs> Uh, to give her some money to help her grandson to buy his way out of the military service because of the widespread abuses between the more senior conscripts and the junior ones because they can, can be sent to the Caucasus and other places where the real fighting is take place and so on and so forth. But most importantly, the abuses in the army. Um, and then finally, uh, a little... Uh, literally two words about the Notre Dame connection. The, uh, the main character, Vladimir, is played by Andrei Smirnov, who is also a, an excellent uh, film director himself. Uh, his first film was shot in the middle of the 1970s, and it's a wonderful film about, about Soviet era war veterans and how they adjust to the post-war uh, life in the Soviet Union. He is now, I was told, is doing a film about one of the most important Soviet-era dissidents and poets named Alexander Ginsburg, whose collection we recently bought, whose papers we recently bought, his letters from prison, thousands of letters from prison during his, during his three, three prison terms in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, so hopefully, uh, maybe one day if the movie is made we can invite uh, Smirnov, the director, to come and talk about it and also to showcase our collection uh, and join the film.